What's up nerds, Ruben here again with another video review over another awesome figure. And today we're gonna be having a look at the NECA Robocop 3 Robocop figure. That's right guys, NECA has released a Robocop 3, somehow skipping over Robocop 2. But, if you ignore the fact that it is Robocop 3, and if you go back and watch part 2, you will notice that, bro that the suits from both part 1 and I mean, part two and three are exactly the same, which is this one right here. A bit more bluer, more shiny. So, yeah, I like to think I like to think that it's a Robocop two figure, mostly because the part three movie kind of sucked. So yeah, here we have the Robocop three figure, Robocop two, whatever you want to call it, but I'm gonna put it as Robocop three. But yes, it's an amazing figure. Pretty much the same figure that we've been getting before, except it's just blue. You know, they decided to put blue in there instead. And we get way more accessories, which kind of makes it um, the fact that it's a Robocop 3 figure. So, uh, let me go ahead and show you the packaging real quick, and we'll get back to this awesome figure. So here we have the standard packaging that NECA usually gives us, which is the clamshell packaging. As you can see, it's got Robocop's helmet right there with his visor, and it says age is 17 and up. So if you're under 17, you're going to get arrested. Nah. By Robocop. So, on the top it says Robocop, you get the regular clamshell packaging. How do you open these things, right? <laughs> no, but you, I usually just do it with a knife. So, as you can tell, it is pretty much the same thing as the standard packaging. I'll bring it out right here. Here we have the battle damage um, packaging, and you can see the really big difference. As you can see, this, this one's kind of more blue. Um, so, it is more thick. As you can see, the thickness of this one right here versus this one, yeah, huge difference. Um, still says Robocop up there at the top. So yeah, the other one's just more thinner. Mostly because you have to, they had to package all of the um, the accessories up in here. So on the back, you get various pictures of the figure. You have them, it says Cobra Assault Cannon, which is the one he used on part two as well, and the one he used to, de to defeat Kane towards the beginning. Uh, you know, Kane, let's step outside. And then um, it says remo removable jetpack, so it comes with the jetpack, and, and then it comes with interchangeable left Forearm, so that is cool. And on the bottom, it gives you the instructions for the um, for the holster. So as you can see, they pretty much just got the picture from the old one, um, the um, the silver one, as you can see, because it's silver right here. It's blue. So yeah, pretty cool. And on the bottom, you get all the people that were involved in making this figure. Gosh, it's taking up my whole backdrop. Sorry. So yeah, by NECA. Cool. Alright, so that is the packaging. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the figure. Alright, so here we have Robocop out of its package. It's actually been out of its package, but here we have him. An amazing figure, pretty much the same thing. I will bring out my other one and show you all. But of course, you guys have already kind of seen the other one. So all you, you basically already know that it's pretty much just blue. I, I mean, I, I kind of like the blue. I mean, I kind of miss the silver, but I like how it's blue. Mostly because blue is my favorite color. Um, so we're gonna set him aside. We're gonna have to look at it as a ah, add his accessories. My bad. So here we have the jetpack. He comes with the jetpack as seen in RoboCop 3. Pretty cool sculpting. I like the yellow inside here. The um, warning um, hazardous red and I mean yellow and black stripe on the handles. Um, it is ball jointed right here, so you can move it around along with the figure. Um, it's all big and bulky around here, uh, kind of silver, not really silver, more of a gun metal. I like it, all the hydraulics, all the the um, the pistons and stuff. That's where the, the air comes out, I'm guessing. I like how it's all kind of um, the honeycomb um, detail inside right here. That's pretty cool. And the wiring. So yeah, there you have the jetpack, man. I have seen a Robocop 3. Pretty cool. It's like a robot. And the next, let me set that aside. The next accessory is the interchangeable forearm. Aside from the um, interface needle that it usually came with, this time we have the um, the forearm. I think I may be wrong. My brother is usually the um, the Robocop expert here. I mean, I like Robocop too, but I can't I can't remember part three. I know this is the machine gun in the middle. I think no, this is the grenade launcher. This is the machine gun right here. And I think this is the flamethrower. I may be wrong though. 
may be wrong. Maybe the other way around, but I know this is the grenade launcher because it's got that big old uh, hole over there. So as you can see, it pegs in right there. And I will show you how each one of these peg on here in a little bit. But getting into the last accessory that he comes with is the um, the gun, the long gun. Let me look back at the packaging. What's it called? Oh, I forgot. Uh, the Cobra Assault Cannon. Wow, we've seen this many times. On the third film, the first and the second. Um, the first, you may, you may remember the bad guy, the main bad guy uses this to blow up cars. He has a lot of them. And I think he, he even uses it against Robocop himself. And on the second one, he uses it against Kane. And then on the third one, I can't remember how exactly that went, but I know he used it. But this is very famous and in very infamous in the Robocop films. So I like how it's kind of got that little monitor in the front right there, blue screen. And right here, it's got the, um, I guess where you look from, the little monitor there as well. It's a very long gun. Um, I've tried putting it on other on other of my figure on the other figures I have. I don't think it goes too well. It's too it's too big. It looks better on the film, and it's got that it's got that leather strap too. Um, so yeah, I guess you can count this one. Yeah, this is an accessory right here. My bad. But every Robocop comes with this, which is the Auto Nine. It's a little blaster right there. It's all black. We've seen this before, many many times. So, we're going to start off by putting the jetpack on him. Um, so you just slide it on him, as so. It's going to be a bit hard, you got to fiddle with it a bit. Well, I usually don't even put the hands on there, but there you have it. And you can pose his head. Unless, I really wish they would have given us a stand with, along with all of this so you can kind of pose him flying. But yeah, there you have it with the jetpack. It, it, it settles on very, very firm actually. So, just pop that off. Okay, so you usually want to put the neck down first and then pop it off in the back. And the best part about it, it won't even really, it won't even mess up these little parts right here. So that's nice. And here is Robocop with the Cobra Assault Cannon. Uh, yeah, so I said it's a really long gun, as you can see, when it's on him. Um, it's, it's a bit weird, I don't know. Um, because, the, the, because he can't really bend his arms that all that far, you can't really have him hold it like that, you know, like a regular gun. You know, you can't really have him hold it like that. So, it is a bit odd. It does work better with other figures. I don't know. I, I wish it would have been good with this Robocop figure, but the fact that he has... And he lacks the articulation to hold that certain gun. I, I don't know. It, it just it doesn't really work. But it's it's always nice to have it. I mean, it really is. I'm not saying the articulation on this figure sucks because you know me, I'm I'm all about detail, not really articulation. But you know it's okay. So, in case you guys don't know, Robocop is played. I'm sorry. But yeah, Robocop is played by a different actor on the third film. I can't remember his name off of the top of my head, but I know that it's not Peter Weller. So, if you could go back and look at the film, if you have it, or if you watch a clip of it on YouTube, does it look like him? Yeah, kind of. Um, I still see Peter Weller in there for some reason. Uh, his voice does sound different as well. My bad. We, we gotta go over the last one. Yeah, so this, this last bit of our, arti I mean articulation, this last bit of accessory, like I mentioned before, with the um, interface needle, the arm, the other arm is easy to pop off. More the glove gauntlet, whatever you want to call it. And you just pop this on. I will mention though, the hand is a bit of a softer rubber, so that's one of the reasons why it is easy to pop it off. Whereas if this one is more of a harder plastic, so I don't know how that's um, how it's going to work. And so it is going to be a bit harder to fuss around with. Uh. Yeah, so I'm over here trying to put it on. Yeah, so it is a bit harder to fuss around with. So I would recommend being careful with this um, little magazine right here. I would, I, I usually just hold it like that and then pop it on. So I don't know how it works. Is it like this? Because I haven't seen the film in so long, mostly because I don't really like it. But I really like the figure. And I had, to, I had kind of had to go searching for, um, for his accessories because I kind of had it scattered. Let's look at the box real quick. Um, 
Okay, so it's the other way around, my bad. So, it's like this. Look at here. Stupid Ruben doesn't know how to do stuff. Okay, so there you there you have it. The um So yeah, it, it, it looks pretty cool. I don't know why I don't have him pose with this. I kind of like it now. Yeah. Now that the lights kind of shimmering, crap. Now that the lights kind of shimmering on it. It looks a bit better. Cuz the sun's going down. It's it's getting Yeah, it's, it's getting down. So, yeah, there you have that part. And then just putting the arm back on. <sighs> Crap. There it goes, yeah. So it is a bit hard, it is a bit tough. So this figure is a bit more pricey than the other ones. Um, I, I think, I don't have the price on it. Because I think I got this at Comic Con. Yeah, because I didn't even re I really didn't even know of this figure's existence until I saw it at Comic Con for myself. I'm like, oh wow, I didn't even know NECA made that. That's one of the reasons why I got it. Yeah, when I see something of NECA, I just have to have it. I'm sorry. Oh look, my mood ring changed. It's now green. It was blue. I don't know what that means. It's transforming. It's weird. I don't know what green means. <laughs> sorry, I'm getting off track. So anyway. Articulation. So for articulation, his head does move down that much, does move up that much. Rotation at the head. Uh, his arms do move that that do move up that much. It is a bit hindered. Uh, rotates. Single jointed elbow goes back that much. Oh, that hurts my arm. Rotation at the glove, gauntlet, hand, whatever, wrist. Uh, it is it is hidden, so I do love that. Nothing at the wrist. Same thing with the other arm. Um, the um, he does have that ab crunch. Does go down that much. Uh, rotates. So there you have it. Uh, no rotation at the waist, though. Uh, the leg, the whole leg does move up that much. Does move backward that much. A bend at the knee. Same thing with this one. And a pivot at the ankle. Same thing with this one. Okay, so yeah, I did say, so that, that's it for articulation, but... Be careful with the piston. This one's still on, as you can see, like that. But this one is broken. Wow. Why? Well, because um, it took a cliff dive. It took a shelf dive. And um, the spring-loaded holster is now off. Yeah, I kind of had to... I super glued it on, so it does look a bit... But it's hollow. As you can hear it, and compared to this one. Nah, man. But yeah, it is a bit hollow, and this part is off. That's what happens whenever it takes a shelf dive. So I don't really have it on the shelf anymore. I just have it on the table with the rest of my figures. So do be careful with this. Be careful, please. So size comparison time, guys. Here we have the RoboCop 3 blue version figure next to the original retailed figure uh, from the first RoboCop um, series. So I mean, from the first RoboCop movie, my bad. So I like to call this one the RoboCop 1 and this one the 2. There is no such thing as number three. But whichever one you like, I re it really doesn't matter. This one comes with just one accessory. Well, two with the interface needle and the blaster. This comes with a lot more, as you can tell. So which one would you rather get? Your move, creep. And here we have Robocop next to another NECA figure, which is the Terminator uh, T-800 endoskeleton figure. He does stand a bit taller. Robocop is small. So there you go. And here we have Robocop next to the Marvel Legends uh, X-Men Rogue figure. And here's Robocop next to another robot, or a droid, which is C-3PO from The Force Awakens from the Star Wars Black Series first, uh, my bad, the Star Wars Black Series line. So he is um, smaller, almost up to his shoulder. And here's Robocop next to the Star Wars Black Series First Order Stormtrooper. So to wrap up my review, this has already been a long review, mostly because of the accessories because the other RoboCop reviews that I've done so far have not been that long. But I do apologize if it has been too long, but I have to take time to admire this amazing figure by NECA. So yes, I'm so glad NECA did release this. Hope you guys enjoyed this review, guys. Please stay tuned to other reviews in the future, and I'm gonna be doing more reviews over some more Terminator figures. So hope you guys enjoyed, stay tuned for more, and as always, this has been a Rubik's Film. You guys, stay safe. Stay awesome. See you guys later.